In this video, we're going to look at magnitude and direction form in relation to vectors. This video is part of an ongoing series for AS level mathematics, the first year of A level mathematics. So what is magnitude direction form of a vector? Well, that is when you're given a vector and you're given the magnitude and direction. Makes sense, right? Um, now the magnitude you should know is the size of the vector. So you could say this vector might have a magnitude of 10, for example, and the direction is the angle measured either from the horizontal or the vertical uh, axis. So you could have uh, an angle measured from the horizontal. Um, so let's use a different color. Okay, so let's say this is horizontal line, the angle might be measured in here, or it could be measured from a vertical line as well. Okay, in here. Um, so let's say, for example, that angle was 20 degrees you now have a vector in magnitude direction form. And the point is you need to be able to convert between magnitude direction form and column vector form. Uh, I'd encourage you to think about how you might go ahead and do this. I think you'd be able to figure it out. How do you think you could take this information and get a column vector out of that? So I encourage you to pause the video and have a think about that. Okay, so a column vector, remember, gives you the horizontal distance and the vertical distance. Um, so as long as we can find these two lengths here, we'll have the column vector for this vector. So we can think of this as a right triangle. Here would be our right angle. And now we have a right triangle with an angle and the hypotenuse. Think back to GCSE mathematics, you learn how to find the lengths of a right triangle given an angle and the hypotenuse or any side of that right triangle. Um, so do you remember how to do that? Hopefully you're thinking of the trigonometric ratios. So if you want to find this length, for example, the opposite side to the angle, we've got the opposite side and the hypotenuse, we would use the sine ratio. So we can say sine of, uh, well, in general, we can say sine theta equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. And so in this example, we could say sine of 20 equals uh, y, I'm going to use y for the vertical distance over the hypotenuse, which is 10. And so now to find y, just rearrange this equation. So we can say y equals sine of 20 degrees multiplied by 10. And you can plug that into the calculator to get an approximate answer. So rounding that off, get approximately 3.42 to two decimal places. Then to find the horizontal distance, we can say we can use the cosine ratio. So cosine of 20 equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So that's x over 10. Then rearranging this, we can see x is equal to cosine of 20 multiplied by 10. And if you plug that into a calculator, rounding off to two decimal places, you get 9.40. So these are these two distances here, 3.42 and 9.40. Okay, I didn't pick a very nice example. I could have made the numbers a bit neater. But anyway, uh, that's enough to say that the column vector then, if we called this vector A, for example, um, we could say A equals uh, uh, 9.40 and 3.42. Remember the number on top is the Horizontal distance, the number on the bottom is how far you go up. They're both positive because we're going in the positive directions. And also you can write this in ij notation, which we talked about in the previous video. You can write this as 9.40i plus 3.42j. Okay, so that is converting from magnitude direction form to column vector form. You should also be able to go the other way. So if you're given a vector in either ij notation or column vector, form, you need to be able to convert it to magnitude direction form. Uh, so let's have a look at an example of that. So let's say you're given two vectors, a equals 2i plus 3j, and b equals 3i take 4j. And you want to find the magnitude, find the magnitude of a plus b. Okay, so firstly, we want to find a plus b. We just add the different components. So 2i plus 3i is 5i, and 3j take 4j is negative j. We looked at examples of that 
in the previous video. Um, and now to find the magnitude, well, let's draw a little picture quickly. Remember what these parts of this vector mean. So, well, actually, let's draw an accurate picture. This would actually be going down like this, right? Because this is a negative j. So we would go across five units in the x direction. That's what that 5i means, remember? That's five lots of the unit vector i in the positive x direction. So that would be five, and then we're going down one unit, one unit in the negative y direction. So this would be negative one. Okay, so if we want to find the magnitude, it's equivalent to finding the hypotenuse of this right triangle we've just created. And you know how to find the hypotenuse of right triangle given the two legs you want to use Pythagoras' theorem. Um, so in general, we can say, if we're given a vector a, let's say it's equal to xi plus yj, the magnitude of a, which is symbolized by these two lines uh, beside the, the label of the vector, this is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So in this example, to find the magnitude of a plus b, we take the square root of five squared plus one squared. Now, whether it's a negative or positive there, it doesn't really matter because you're squaring it. So squaring uh, negative one is positive one. So you can just write plus one squared. This is 25 plus one, which is the square root of 26. So that is the magnitude of A plus B. Uh, let's just quickly talk about finding the angle as well, which hopefully you can see how you might do that as well. Um, so if you wanted to find this angle in here, um, how do you think you might do that? Finding the direction. So again, we can use the trig ratios. So you could use any of these sides. So if you used five and negative one, you could use 10. So you could say 10 of theta equals the opposite side over the adjacent side. Opposite over adjacent. Or if you find the mag uh, magnitude or what you could refer to as the hypotenuse of this right triangle, you could use sine or cosine as well. Okay, so let's have a look at a problem solving question in, uh, in this topic. So this question says, in the diagram, vector AB equals PI plus QJ and AD equals RI plus SJ. ABCD is a parallelogram. Prove that the area of ABCD is PS take QR. If you want to give this one a go yourself, pause the video now. Okay, so uh, the way you want to start off this problem is to firstly draw a set of axes. Um, so I guess we can draw it like this. And then draw in your parallelogram. Doesn't have to be super accurate. Just, you know, so it's on a slant like this one is. And then think about how you would find that area. So also think about what this information means. If AB equals PI plus QJ, so here we have A, here we have B, C, and D. That's saying that we've gone across uh, P units and up uh, Q units. So in other words, the coordinates of B will be PQ, right? Um, if, we, if we say that A is at zero, zero, which we can because we've just essentially placed this on a coordinate axis where we wanted it to be. So I've set A at zero, zero uh, to make it easier. So then AD is R, RI plus SJ. That means the coordinates of D are RS. Next, I want the coordinates of C. So how can we find those? Well, uh, if we... Think about AD being parallel to BC uh, and also the fact that it's a parallelogram meaning that AD is equal to BC in length. That means that those vectors AD equals BC. So AD and BC are equal. That means from B to C we're going across, uh, we're going across R and up S, let me just do that a bit neater, and up S units. 
So we've gone across P and then across R. So the X coordinate of C is P plus R and the Y coordinate is Q plus S. Okay, so we have the coordinates of A, B, C and D. And now essentially what you want to do is just to find the areas of this diagram uh, in whichever way you want. So the way I did it was I split it up into triangles um, like so. And I essentially found the area, the total area under this shape. And then I subtracted, um, I subtracted these triangles and this rectangle. Uh, another way to do it is to draw a rectangle, oops, wrong pen, is to draw a big rectangle and then subtract, you know, these other areas that are not included. Um, so a couple ways to do this, uh, but let's go ahead and finish this off. So firstly, this triangle here has a base of R and a height of S. So uh, let's call this point X just to make it easier. Let's call this point E, this point Z, and this point here F. Oh, and also another point. Let's call this point here. I'll just rub that S out. Let's call that point there Y. Uh, I want to go back to blue. Y. Okay. So firstly, AXD triangle. AXD has an area of half RS. Then triangle DYC. Triangle DYC. Uh, that is that vector DC is the same as AE. So that's going to be half PQ. Same as this triangle down here, AEB. And also this big rectangle here, XDYZ. Uh, rectangle XDYZ. That's, uh, well, we've gone, the, the length here is P, right? The horizontal distance of the vector DC, which is the same as AB, which is P here from the question. So it's P multiplied by the height, which is S. So that's just PS. Uh, it's a bit of a messy diagram, but I hope you're following. Okay, so this these areas represent the entire area under this parallelogram. So I'll just quickly shade it and then rub it out because it'll look really messy. So that's that entire area there. Okay, so now I want to subtract these two pink triangles and this rectangle. Um, so those areas, this one, triangle AEB, well, we already essentially figured that out. That's half PQ, same as DYC. This triangle here, that's the same as AXD, triangle um, BFC. This is kind of funny saying all these letters. Uh, that is half RS. And then this little rectangle in here has a length of, um, what was that again? This is a D that has a length of R. So trying a uh, rectangle E, B, F, Z has a length of R and a height of Q, the Y corner of B. Okay, so we want to add all these together, subtract all these areas, and then we get our answer. So the area of the parallelogram, parallelogram equals half RS plus half PQ plus PS. Subtract, put the brackets because that negative would distribute to all of these. Uh, half PQ plus half RS plus RQ. So you can see that we can cancel the half RS, subtract half RS, half PQ, subtract half PQ, and then we're left with PS 
subtract RQ, which was uh, as required. So we can say as required, as required. Okay, so that was a bit of a problem solving question. I'm not exactly sure what that has to do with the, the magnitude direction form. Um, uh, maybe I'm missing something here if you want to point out what the connection is between these, but it was in that section and I found that problem interesting um, anyway, so I thought I'd stick it in this, this video. Uh, okay, so hopefully you found that video interesting uh, and helpful. Um, main point is to be able to convert, as I said at the start, between magnitude and direction form and column vector form and IJ notation and be able to solve problems to do with those types of questions. Please leave a like if you found that helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.